Good evening, everybody. See Annie and Tina and Angela, Hannah, Amy. Hi, guys. Oh, Melissa, you made it. Yay. Hi, Sam. Welcome, guys. Catherine's here as well. And Linda. Super Cheeky's here as well. Hi, guys. How are we? Okie dokie. Let me get myself sorted out. Julie's here as well. Wonderful. Hope everybody's had a super week. Happy Friday evening, guys. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Juma. Hi, A Fan Colouring. It's great to see so many of you jumping in. We didn't have a lot of notice for this live. I didn't know if I was going to have time tonight, but we decided this morning that I would. So, Castle Arts Pastel Tint. Now, you guys were absolutely raving about the gold pencils when I did the review. I think it was a fortnight ago today. Had a lot of requests since then to have a look at these pastel tint pencils with you guys. So, what I'm going to do tonight is talk you through what you get with the pencil case set and then we'll do a bit of a demo and you can see how they work with both wax and oil based pencils. Hi Liz. Jennifer's glad it's Friday. God you and me both it's been a week this week. It's been a week. <laughs> Okie dokie. So this is the pencil case set um, the 50 set of colours that you get. There's Helen as well. Hi Helen. And what you get within the pencil case set is more of these really, really nice little sketch pads. So we have some Bristol board, black paper sketch pad again, and some white cartridge paper. So that comes in the pack. So I'm just gonna get rid of those out of the way for the time being. And you also get another one of these little books. Now this is a really, really nice touch with these pencils because not only does it give you some hints and tips on how to use them, there's lots of other really good sections in here too on colour theory and other things. So I won't flick through the whole of the booklet with you. This is very, very similar to what you saw me going through with the gold pencils a fortnight ago. In with your coffee, Helen. <laughs> That's a good effort. So really nice section on the shades that you get in this set as well with a really handy bit of colour theory to the side here. And then it talks you through um, getting to know light form, how to do shading, different techniques with the pencil, lots of wonderful things, including tutorials at the back. So really, really good stuff in this little book. And we will be talking about colour theory and things on our next page project together. So what do we get in the pack? Really, really nice set of colours that will complement most other pencil sets that you have. So these have moved about a little bit because I've been using them. What they do give you, which is a really nice touch, is one of these swatching sheets. Now what I would usually do with these is I would do a darker shade to one side and then fade off slightly so that you can see, you know, the, the depth of colour that you can get with them. Because these are a pastel tint range of pencils, I've just block coloured because I wanted to see how vibrant we could get them. So this is the range of colours that you get. And it's actually 50 in here, so I don't know why it says 48, but maybe there's two invisible ones that I haven't seen. I don't know. So this is the range of colours. Now, one thing that I do like about these is they're very easily identifiable. So unlike the classic range where you have a black barrel of the pencil, and just the top end has your colour on it. These ones are very easy on the eye. You can see from the swatching sheet which ones you're going to be going for. They're all really nicely labelled as well. Most of them you can see this white type really, really nicely on them. There's just the odd one that I found in here where it's a little more difficult to see. don't know if you can make that one out. And I think it's just because of this funky colour, it's quite pale. So, pastel tint, what's my main reasons for having these ones? I don't know what you guys think, but what I've found with these is most of the other ranges that I've got, you have a few pastel shades in the pot, so to speak, but not as big a range as this. And I find these really, really nice to use with all of the other pencil sets that I've got. So, 
what I've got out in front of me is my gold pencils, my classics, um, my prismas on the other side of the room, but I guess I could grab them in a minute. And I'm going to do a bit of colouring with these and just show you how they layer up with some regular pencils. So less of me talking and more of the colouring, I think. So let me show you what we've got. So this page is from Magical Jungle. And I, I've had a pretty rubbish week actually work-wise. So my head has been absolutely rinsed. So what I've been doing is just some basic block colouring on this page because it's pretty much been all that my, my poor brain can cope with this week for one reason or another. So what I've used on here... This isn't the pastel um, colours that I've used here. This is actually a couple of the gold pencils, which I have here next to me. So again, just to give you a little bit of a comparison with the pastel tint, they're very clearly identifiable as pastel tint because the whole barrel of the pencil is one colour. With the gold, you have this nice navy blue barrel. And with the classic range, you have this black barrel here. So you can easily identify across the ranges which pencil that you're using. Hi Jeanette, welcome. There's Dominique popping in as well. I'm trying to keep a really close eye on who's jumping in. If I'm missing people, I'm so sorry. So we've already got some blues and things going on this one. So I think what I'm going to do is have a little look at some of the purples. And let's get some purple going on here. So I think what we will go with... Let's mix two of the pastel tints together first of all. So I'm going to go for this Hydrangea and Heather. It's very much easier to see these because they are nicely labelled, nice coloured barrels. So it's only taken me seconds to go ahead and grab those out of my pencil case. Oh, thanks, Jeanette. One of those weeks, unfortunately. It's been a bit of a fortnight. Um, those of you that are... Um, expecting or hoping me to be live on Sunday I probably am going to have to disappoint you this week purely because my head has been rinsed in the evenings and I ha just haven't done any of the prep so I know what we're going to be doing we're going to be doing another ink tense page but until I've sat down and actually ironed out the wrinkles um, I'm going to have to probably just push it a week to next week just to give my poor brain a chance to recover and um for me to actually have something that makes any sense to show you guys. Yeah, it has been a bad week, Helen. You're right, there's um, not a lot of uh, good things coming out of the news at the moment, unfortunately. Not not good at all. So we're going to go in for some basic block colouring. I'm going to go from dark to light with these. Now remember, guys, these are a wax-based pencil. What are these cranes, says Jenny? Jenny, these are Castle Arts Pastel Tint, and I'm going to be demonstrating these also with my Castle Arts Gold and Classics. So to, at the moment, we're in with the Hydrangea and the Heather colour. Right, let me see. So let's get the glasses on. That would be a really superb start, wouldn't it? Well, there it is. <laughs> I do this every week, don't I? So just need to be a little bit careful here that I don't forget to do the other side of this so I'm just going to work on this side of the butterfly I think tonight and then that way I can catch myself up slightly so going in with the hydrangea so again this is the pastel tint set so if you've got questions guys just fire away I am going to keep try and keep as close an eye on my iPad as I can so I don't miss any of you guys okie dokie here we go so these are, when you compare them to the classics and the gold, I would say that these sit between the classic and the gold in terms of how soft they are. They're not soft and smishy like Prismacolor, but they are soft enough to blend nice and easily and to go quite easy on your, on your hands when you're using them, which is nice. Hi Celia. So I have blended these in with both oil and wax based pencils, which I will show you guys tonight because I've got the gold sitting next to me. So just remember, those of you that have been on the live before, I still have that 30% off discount code with Castle Arts, which is live on their website for new orders with uh, the UK, the US and Germany at the moment. And the pastel tint set is actually on special offer anyway. So this is reduced. Let me just grab the pad because I wrote this down a second ago. So they don't have the tin in stock at the moment, but they have the zipped pencil case. 
They're already on 32% off at £40.99. And with my discount code, you can take an additional 30% off. And that means you'll get them for £28.69, which is an absolute bargain. Right, let me scroll back. I can just see a couple of comments I missed. Did I do the blue parts? Um, the, so the blue parts, Helen, I actually used my gold pencil. So it's still Castle Arts. It's just the gold ones. So that's the hydrangea down. I'm going to go ahead now and just blend in a complementary colour, which is this heather still in the pastel tint. Stop it, says Angela. <laughs> hey, guys, you know, I wish, I wish that I was on commission um, for sharing this code with you, but I'm not. The last time I checked with Castle, they had about 120 people had used the code. So that will have been a lot of business that went their way. And I don't didn't get any commission for it. I wish. But they did send me that multimedia set, which arrived yesterday, and it is absolutely delicious. So I can't complain, really, can I? This is just about sharing those discount codes with you guys so that you can get beautiful things at a really good price. Oh, I do believe that I see Mel here as well. What time is it over in Oz, Mel? Yeah, Melissa, aren't they soft? So the gold pencils, those of you that haven't got a set and haven't tried them, Melissa there is just saying about um, how soft they are to use. They are absolutely beautiful pencils. Um, very, very soft. Not as smishy as Prisma, but nice and soft to use. So I will show you some of that in a moment. Reminders of the code. Yes, I certainly can remind you of the code. In fact, I will write it down. That's the one, Dominique. Suzanne 30. So I will put it up in my Instagram stories for you guys after the live. <laughs> so I'm just going to find another little area to um, put this purple into. I think what I'm going to do is carry on up top, up here. I think the set would amount to more than a commission. You know, I was trying to work it out, Jeanette, the other day, actually. Me and Catherine were. So if people on average were spending, say, about 50 quid on pencils using that code... It's probably about five and a half, six grand's worth of um, business, potentially. So even if I was at sort of 10 or 20% of that, it would probably be more than the set that they've sent me. But having said that, I really don't need any more pencils in my life after these new ones that have come. So it's all good. It's all good. So I'm just mixing those two colours together there. I may pop a little bit of a gold pencil over the top of the darkest shade just to give us a little bit of contrast there. So I'm just going to have a little look at my gold tester sheet. So looking at this, I think it's not a pinky purple, it's more of a bluey purple. So let's go for purple lake deep and see how that blends in. Purple lake just need to find it there we go so this is one of the gold pencils so this set is actually oil based rather than wax based so I'm going to go ahead and layer this over the pastel tint colors that I've used just to give us a little bit of contrast between the mid-tone and the lightest tone here so that's layering really really nicely over that pastel tint color and then what I will do is just blend that out slightly. So this is where we're mixing together oil-based products and wax-based products. You can do that. Um, you won't find as much wax bloom using the oil-based pencils, of course. But these are really, really versatile. So this is just showing you how, although you may not feel that you need this set of pastel tint colours, it will give you another weapon in your arsenal of colouring because you can actually smush it in with all of the other ranges that you've got. So Prisma, Polychromos, Luminance, um, the, I don't know how you pronounce it, the Brute Funa, I think, if, I don't know how you pronounce that one. But they all sit really nicely along any other set that you've got. So I'm just using that Hydrangea colour just to soften that transition there. So you can see how soft and smishy they are because there are little bits of residue coming away off of the pencils there. Let's have a look. Some of the same colours that are in the mixed media set. So I'm not sure if... So the Purple Lake Deep in the mixed media set, what you actually get is some of their watercolour pencils, their classics and the metallics. So none of the gold ones are in there. 
um, and none of the pastel tints. So you would still have to get those sets separately. Blasphemy, just <laughs> Melissa thinking of more pencils. <laughs> Melissa, that's so funny. Right, let's get some other combinations going here. Just looking for my sorting sheet. What have I done with it? There it is. So what else do we think, guys? Let's unzoom us slightly. So I'm thinking we've got blues and purples going. I'm thinking purpley pink. So what I might use, let's go for some of this jelly bean one. Layla deserves a present for yourself. Yeah, that is um, a, an excuse that I use on a regular basis. Um, much to Catherine's despair. <laughs> I can never have enough colouring pencils and I absolutely agreed. Right, I'm just going to find a nice purple that will go with this jelly bean colour. So this is kind of on the purpley pinky spectrum, this one. So something in this kind of purple range would sit really nicely with that. So I'm just having a little look. Might go for number 29 purple because that's just slightly darker and it's just on the right palette there. So let's just find that one. Purple, it's not purple light, is it? No, it's two after that one. There it is. Colour me a pink monkey. Hello, welcome. Helen's husband would agree with Catherine, yeah, I know. It's one of these things that we always tell ourselves, isn't it? We don't actually need more pencils, but it's not always about what you need. It can be about what you want as well. That's part of the pleasure. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the purple from the gold range, and then we have got jelly bean from the pastel tint range. So this is two different ranges being used together here. Let me just get my specs back on again. And again, we're going to go from another dark to light blend. So I'll just zoom us in slightly more. So this will be uploaded over onto my YouTube channel later on this evening, because I know you guys are viewing this on the side right now. You will be able to see it the right way around over on YouTube. Oh, Sam, you made me laugh. Um, so Sam's just saying there, hubby doesn't know, but he's already bought these for her birthday. <laughs> It's my kind of uh, my kind of birthday present that is. You've already bought it for me, dear. It's all sorted. Don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, all of the details. If you you guys are watching this over on YouTube, the product links will be in the description below, as well as the discount code for you guys to use. But just remember, the discount code on Castle Arts website is only valid at the moment for customers in the UK, the US, and Germany. What's Dominique saying? Cheaper to stay home and colour, yeah, I know, definitely. Definitely. Get the pencils while they're on offer and they'll last us a while then, I'm thinking. <laughs> so what I'm doing with this one is I'm pressing a bit harder towards the top of the shape, tapering off the pressure towards the middle of the shape and just leaving a nice base to transition this jelly bean colour into. So it's another thing that these little booklets that you get with the pencils are quite good for showing you. I'm hoping this one has got it in, it hasn't. Let me just grab the pastel tint booklet. So you guys, when I'm blending things and doing things, I talk to you about um, pressure with the pencil. So 10 would be pushing really, really hard and down to one and zero where you're just tickling the page. So when I'm transitioning like this, I'll be pressing around a seven or an eight and then I'll be reducing the pressure off to get it to about a 2-3 and that's where I will use to blend the next colour in. So I'm going back to the pastel tint pencils. So this is Jelly Bean, lovely, lovely name for this one. I've got some really funky names, um, these pastel tint. I'll show you a couple of them on the, uh, on the chart. It's quite, they're quite cute. So what we might do actually is I might go ahead and put a third colour down the bottom end here. I want to put a little bit of blue into this, I think. So I'm just merging these two together. Now blend over pretty much into the tail end of the shape here. And then I think, let me look for a really nice, a nice zingy blue. Let's go for periwinkle. This is much, much easier to find again. And one of the things that I absolutely adore about these ones 
is the fact that the whole barrel of the pencil is the same colour. It makes much easier selection so you, you know that obviously when I'm reaching for other pencils out of the classics, I tend to be fumbling around a bit because the uh, barrels are all the same colour, which I find really difficult. But I love this about the pastel tint ones, the fact that they're actually the same colour. So I'm going to go for this periwinkle colour. So I'm just going to bring this into this bottom corner down here. And then we're going to just gently blend this backwards into the pink. And this will make a really cute, almost purpley shade when we mix these colours together. So I'm just doing a really gentle back blend. And you can just see that purpley tone come in there. Love the names of these pencils. So what's Dominique saying? Do I ever use fine liner colours for patterns? I tend to use fine liners more for little details on things. So for example, the brickwork that I do, the stonework that I do, if I'm wanting to deepen sort of black areas in sort of cracks in stonework, I'll use them for that. I don't tend to use them for sort of normal colouring, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, but I do use them. It's just more for detailing, really. So I'm just going to keep merging these colours back into each other. Oh, Alexandra. Hi. Oh, no, your sound's off, so you won't have heard me say hi. Or just wave like this, and then when you listen to the replay, you'll know that I was saying hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to gently merge these all together. So this is wax going directly onto oil-based product, and you can see it's still doing what it should do with these colour blends. Yeah, we're all good, thank you, Alexandra. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is just go back to the gold pencil, the purple, and we just go on and go ahead and just darken up at the end here. So I always go in for more than one bite at the cherry, as we say. So we then back blend into some of that blue and it just sharpens everything up really, really, really nicely. And in fact, I'm just going to tickle this again with this jelly bean. That looks really cute. I like that a lot. I've left my little um, my little brush on the other side of the room, which is why I'm having to sort of blow these residue bits away. So where else are we going to put that colour? I think that needs to be somewhere else because that's pretty superb. Let's put a bit of it up here as well. Hi Katrina, welcome, thank you so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my base layer down again with this purple, so this is Castle Arts Gold Range, which is oil-based. Sorry for those of you that are here through the whole thing, hearing me say the same thing over and over again. It's just for the benefit of the other lovely folks who are wandering into the live this evening. So I'm gonna do the same again, so we get a nice saturation of this color at the end here. Katrina wants to know what pencils we're using. So we are on Castle Arts Gold and Castle Arts Pastel Tint. They're the pencils that we're using tonight. So we get a nice saturation of colour at the end of the shape. I've wobbled around a bit there, but that will be a sparkly pen. Or it might even be paint. I don't know. We'll see how we feel. Oh, thanks, Dominique. You're so good at this. So I'm just going to ease off on that pressure. So remember on that chart that I showed you a few minutes ago, we're just easing off on, say, a two to three pressure. Just helps us to blend these colours one into the other. And then we're going to transition into this lovely jelly bean colour from the pastel tint range. So we merge these together in the area where I eased off on the pressure on the pencil. So just change to circles just to get those added together nicely at the top of the shape. And then nice gentle pressure down towards the base. And then we're going to leave that tiny little pop of white paper here and that's where we'll add the blue. And I'll probably have to watch this back because I'm going to have a stack of pencils that I've done bits on this butterfly with and I'm not going to have a clue what the hell I've done later on. So back on with the periwinkle. So we just push a little harder at the base of the shape here and then gently start to back blend into that pink and we get a really, really nice purple tone. 
There's Sophia and Helen popping in. Hi guys, welcome. Beautiful. I like doing little things like this and, and getting sort of extra little colours out of things. So this is a similar technique to what you would see me. Hi gal what you would see me um, doing with the ink tense pencils really. It's one colour leads into another, leads into another, and that is how you get these interesting colours. So I'm just gonna sharpen up the purple, just back blend again very slightly, like so. Back on with the jelly bean. So really, really gently, and you can just see that it just helps that purple area to pop. And then back on with the periwinkle. There we go. And that's Shark Queen's popped in. Hi, happy Friday. Just look in Shark Queen if I've got you on my list because I don't know your proper name, do I? No, I don't have you on my list. You'll have to let me know so I can add you in. There we go. Gorgeous. Right, I'm just going to leave those three to the side separately because I'm going to completely lose the plot and have to watch my own video back which is really quite unfortunate. So let's have a little look. So let's do some more subtle colours now. So one of the colour names that I really adore is this one, Snow Waffle. So I'm going to grab that one. Where are you Snow Waffle? You're here somewhere. There you are. Never would have thought to blend pink and blue. It's just going back to colour theory basics. So you can make purple. Um, let me see if I've got the booklet that's got it in. I know the gold one's got. And I can show you. Because then you can have a little go yourselves with mixing some of these colours together. So if we look at this. This is the booklet that comes with the gold series so I will touch a little bit more on this when we do the ink tense page but with your colours you basically have primary and secondary colours and primary colours make secondary colours so for purples and pinky tones you would actually make that out of red and blue so red and blue here makes a secondary colour of purple blue and yellow here makes a secondary colour of green yellow and orange will make a set or red even sorry will make a secondary color of orange so when you're looking to choose colors that you're going to use you're pretty safe to choose shades within these color ranges and you know that they're going to make something complementary so with those purpley pinky colors they would fall in kind of this bracket here and that's why we've had a really really nice tone when i've then put blue into it because of course, the blue and red will make purple, and that is, is basic colour theory. So if you do get one of these Castle Art sets that has the booklets and the pads, so it tends to be the zip sets um, rather than the tins, you will get these booklets. And what it will do is it will give you a lot more confidence when you're choosing your colours, because this helps you with your colour theory. I mean, this page as well is really, really handy, because if you're, um, say you're in the middle of a design and you've done flowers in, these colours here and you're not sure which are complementary, this book will show you the opposite colours and colours either side are complementary and it will just help you with choosing your colour palettes and stuff. So these wee books that come with the tins are actually ridiculously helpful. I think they're blooming brilliant actually, they're well worth the money just for the booklet. So when I'm looking at things like this, um, Snow Waffle, now this is quite a pinky colour. We also have some oranges which are on um, like a ready pinky spectrum so we should be able to merge colors like this together and they should complement so what I'm going to do is pick up the coral blush as well and then let's look for a darker color to go with this so I'm going to be looking on the orangey red palettes here I'm thinking possibly got color coral blush I'm going to go for the vermilion and let's see how they blend. Okie doke. So yeah, sorry, I don't know if you found that completely useless information or helpful, but that's a little bit, <laughs> bit of information on how I choose colours. So one colour in the gold again, which will be the dark shade, the vermilion. 
and then I'm going to have a go with this coral blush and this snow waffle colour. So if we were putting them in order of spectrum, it would be that way round. So I'm going to start with the gold ones first. So let's see where on earth am I going to put this one. What I might do is work towards the bottom here. So I am going to distribute these colours in other places on the butterfly, but for the time being, we'll just go for this bit. Ah, oh, Claire, you made it. Hi, Claire. It was good, says Jeanette. Definitely helpful, says Helen. I don't know how I've managed to coherently string a sentence together, to be perfectly honest. I had a conversation about this with my friend who's just popped on earlier on this afternoon. So we'll talk up some more about colour theory anyway when I do the Ink Tense page with you guys. So on with the gold. So this is vermilion. So this is a, a red, but it's on the orange side of the red palette. So let's go in for one of these shapes down here. So again, I'm going to just start at the bottom end of this. Let me swizzle this round slightly. In fact, Suzanne, put your glasses on and then you can see. Still chose the darker one a shade darker than I oh, did, I, Jeanette. <laughs> oh, Shark Queen, your Sandra on Facebook. Right, hang on, I'm going to stick you on my list right now or it won't happen. Fantastic. So, Shark Queen. I have a huge list of people. 175 is Sandra H. Fantastic. That's the thing with these um, Instagram and Facebook thingies. Everyone's got different profile names, haven't they? <laughs> so here we go. So yeah, the reason that I've chosen one that's as dark as it is is because the other two palettes that I've chosen here, the other two colours, we've got um, a mid-range colour and a very pale colour. So I want something to, that's going to make it pop. So what's Angela saying? Is it better to start with the darkest colour first? It's not necessarily better. It's just how I prefer to do it. Um, I think it's easier if you're transitioning colours to go from darker to lighter and then build things up with a second layer rather than go pale with everything then have to blend the mid-tone in and the dark tone. It can sometimes just look a little bit messy. Um, so yeah, I would always go with, with dark first, but that's just my preference. Liz, I've got you checked out, honey. I know I know who you are over on Facebook. <laughs> you, you, it was you, Liz, this morning when I said I was going to go live. was like, oh my God, this is a product I need. And we haven't even discussed it yet. <laughs> it really made me chuckle. It was brilliant. So because this one is so much darker than the other two, what I'm going to do is put a lot less of this darker colour on. And then we're going to build these layers up a little bit slower. So on that blending table, so remember with the pressure shading, if I go back to the table that's in the book, which again is another fantastic touch in these books because it helps me to explain to people what I'm doing. Oh, flipping heck, it's not that one, it's this one. Just like to clarify that that was the uh, chair creaking and not me. <laughs> so when I'm doing this, when I'm adding this red, I'm kind of pushing it around a 7-8 here. As we move down to transition into the other mid-tones, you just ease off on the pressure so that the saturation on the page goes down to around here. So again, another good reason to get the set that has this book because it does help you make sense of some of the things that you're doing with your shading and things. So I'm just going to make sure we've got a nice subtle line here for blending the other two colours in. I'm going to have to sharpen this one. I haven't used this one before. So Coral Blush out of the Pastel Tint range. So sorry for the noise. I'm just popping it into my sharpener. There we go. So this is my trusty doll 133 that I'm using. Absolutely fantastic sharpener. And what we'll do is right where I've started to ease off on the pressure is about here. So I'm just going to merge this colour in. So nice and gently and then overlay everything. So I can push a little harder now we're into the middle of the shape and then we're going to reverse the process and do the same thing that we did with that first colour. Just overlay everything and then we just ease off so you don't have a harsh stop start line. Just blend all of that almost towards the whole base here of the shape. 
And then what we're going to do is use a little bit of this snow waffle. What a cracking name, snow waffle. Don't know who thought of these names, but I love it. <laughs> it really cracks me up. So I've got this nice pinky shade, so I'm going to press nice and hard with this one. And then we're just going to back blend like we did with the other ones a few minutes ago. So that sits really, really nicely over the top of that mid-tone orange. And then we go in for another go, which is why I go from dark to light. So we go in for the first go, get all the base layers down and then we sharpen the colours up. So back onto that vermilion. Push a little bit harder up here now to get a real nice block of the colour. And remember, this is an oil based pencil I'm using at the moment and it's sitting beautifully with those pastel tints which are wax based so you can intersperse these products you're not gonna come to any strife by doing that at all so back on with this coral blush pretty sessionette ah you see and I went a couple shades darker didn't I than you would have gone but if you use solid color theory to choose your colors you're never going to go too wrong it's just about playing so if if you don't want to commit a combination like this to the page straight away. Just get yourself a little piece of paper, um, a cheap sketchbook, and just try these colour palettes out in there before you commit them to the page. And then you know whether it's going to work or not. So you can just see, because they're quite crumbly, um, you do get a little bit of residue on there. So let's add some of this colour up here as well. So I think what I'm going to do is add a bit of this into a different kind of shape. So I'm going to go back on with the vermilion again. But I'm going to go the other way this time. So rather than linear shading, we're going to be using scumbling, which is little circles. So you push backwards and forwards to get the colour into those edge bits where you want it to be. Must be more adventurous, says Jeanette. <laughs> That's all right, you don't have to always live life on the edge with colour. You can go for subtlety as well. Your colouring's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm trying to choose colours that go with a bang though, just to show you guys how versatile all these pencils are. So I'm just changing to little circles. So the principle is the same here, so that we don't get a harsh blend line. We just ease off on the pressure. Just make sure that the end of this is nicely saturated with colour. We go back in again with that coral blush. So again, this is roughly where I want the red to sort of stop. So I'm just going to push a bit harder with this coral blush colour here just to get the red and the orange smushed together really, really nicely. And then as we get nearer to the bottom of this shape where we're going to add that snow waffle colour, we just change to the circular blending again, ease off on the pressure, leave ourselves with a nice little pop of white paper. And then we go ahead with this snow waffle colour. I'm going to push nice and hard just to get that into the base of the shape. Nice and hard to get that over the top of that coral blush. And then just integrate those two colours together. And then we can go back in with the same colours we've just used, just to sharpen everything up. So we go in the first time to get those base layers down and we go in a second time just to get everything sitting nicely. So again, just being nice and careful where those colours are blending together. So back in with the coral blush. Beautiful. And back on with the snow waffle again. And then we just back blend everything so you get exactly the same effect but just with a slightly different blending technique and it's just because of the shape that we were blending that into so let me put those ones together so let's see what haven't we used we could do with some like greens or something couldn't we kind of liking that one hmm. that one might pop quite nicely or do i go hmm. decisions decisions people see what we can find to go with this one. So Viridi, Viridi, very, very odd name, Viridi. Okay, so again, easily 
um, distinguishable from the other pencils because the whole barrel is the same colour as the swatch, which is really, really, really handy. So rather than, actually I haven't got all of the classics with me, it's mainly the golds that I've got. I'm going to stick with the golds because I've only got this small tin of classics next to me, which is not going to be quite, quite so hot. So let's have a look at this golds list and see what we can find that goes with this. So this green is a bluey green, like a turquoise. So colours that it would go with would be other um, greens that are more on like a bluey palette. So potentially this phthalo green could work. Um, just trying to see what else. That might be a little bit too pale for this one. Actually, what I might do is use the pastel as the dark colour. And I might actually pop a really light green and a yellow with it. So what I'm looking for here is sort of lemony green rather than earthy green. I think the mint green would be lost, but the castle green light probably wouldn't be. So let's go with castle green light. Let me just see if I can find him. I do wish that they put the... Uh, the layout of these a little bit better. Uh, fifth one in, that's you. Because the, that's the one thing is the colour chart for this is, is all over the shop. So castle green light and then we'll see how it looks just with the two colours together for the time being. So we are on with the Viridi, don't even know if you pronounce that right, and castle green light. I'm actually going to use this one as the darkest colour out of the two of them. Melissa likes leaf green light. Yeah, it is a nice one. I don't know which would look better, actually. Have me doubting myself, Melissa. Mm, stick with that one and see how we go. Let's see how we go. So I'm going to go up into this bit here. So on with this Viridi colour. So nice and soft really nice nicely soft and blendable the whole of the uh the pastel tint ones are really really <laughs> don't apologize <laughs> you know when you're looking at a color sheet and you're like oh decisions so i haven't pre-planned any of this tonight at all not remotely so we are flying by the seat of our pants this evening so it will either look spectacular or hideous we're about to find out <laughs> hi maria yeah, you know when you're a little bit undecided about colours, yeah, it's just one of those moments. So I'm only going to go for a two colour blend on this one. So I'm just again going to ease off on that pressure just so that we get a seamless transition from one colour to the other. Just push a bit harder at the top of this shape up here just to make sure that we've got everything covered. Batteries going. Oh bless you Dominique. You need to you need to plug yourself in, honey. <laughs> So Castle Green Light, so this is the gold range. Oh yeah, that was a good choice, yum. I'm liking that a lot. So I'm going to just apply that. So where I started to ease off on the pressure was around here. So I'm going to apply this from about that point down. Oh, I'm liking that a lot. That pops beautifully and that would have worked well the other way as well. So I'm just going to take this all the way down to the base of that shape. And just back blend it slightly. There we go. And then go back on with that Viridi colour again. And then just integrate these two together. So we just go on for a second go. Oh, I'm really liking that. I think so far, these two are actually my favourite blends so far. <laughs> Lovely, says Donna. Thanks. So I think what I'm going to do is do um, this down here as well. <sighs> really should have um, brought my little brush thing up to the desk, which I completely forgot to do. So Helen likes it as well. <laughs> I know sometimes... Um, 
if you just chill and have a little go at just combining things that you think will look good even if you're not too sure and then you that's how you come up with color combinations just play around i mean this is a page that i'm not massively bothered about um it's one of these pages that you start when you haven't really got enough brain capacity to think really about what the hell you're doing um because i think i spent probably an hour on i want to say monday night and tuesday night just looking through my book trying to choose a page to do and i actually colored nothing so i settled on this on wednesday and all i've done is a couple of little areas of it and i'm kind of not bothered what color is going where it's just pure putting color on the page just to try and chill and decompress a little bit oh thanks melissa Let's have a look. Would you use the same technique if you were using the pastels with the classics? Let's give let's give a couple a go, um, Angela, and we'll see how they blend. I will do this one, and then I've got my little botanical set next to me. So I'll have a little look. Because actually, even if that doesn't work, I've got more classics in this mixed media thing, which is actually sitting next to me at the moment. Goes so well with the purple. Yeah, it's not, it's not going too badly. This is just going to be like a a rainbow butterfly so I'm not bothered if things clash it's just pure sticking colour on paper <laughs> thanks Helen yeah so um those of you that are just jumping in um just to keep you updated about this ink tense page I promise you faithfully it's going to happen I just don't think it's going to happen this weekend because it's been a rough couple of weeks for me at work and I am um, just not in a fit state to try and think about what colour combinations I'm going to do with you guys when it's on a whole page. So I'm just going to push it to next week. <laughs> and then that way the pressure is off and I can get the colour combinations done and then I'll enjoy it. Because if I don't enjoy it, you guys aren't going to enjoy it. So we're just going to push it for another week. So yeah, I have a date with my ink tents this weekend getting ready, but we'll do more colour theory conversation then as well. Right, so Angela is interested in how things go with the classics. So let me see what we haven't used off of here and what's possibly missing. We definitely need some more green, don't we? So what have we got in the classic set next to me? Have I got phthalo? Yes, I have. Phthalo green light. Let's use you. So, phthalo green light, I'm just looking for, so this is like a yellowy green. So what we might have a go with is this lime coral. Hi, Bianca. Lime coral. Lime coral, where are you? Aha. Here we go, another week to hunt yours down, Jeanette, definitely. Yeah, I'm just not prepared. I haven't done any of the... Uh, colour combinations so that's never going to end well is it so this one is out of the um classic soft touch range so these are wax based and as are these so theoretically they should sit together really really nicely so we have lime coral here in the pastel tint as well that's true take your time yeah definitely <laughs> better to take your time and be prepared than make a mistake on something that's what i say anyway there we go. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to blend from the darkest through to lightest. So I'm going to go in with this phthalo green light, which is on a yellowy green palette rather than a bluey green palette. And I think I'm actually going to pop it. Let's pop it on this little middle shape here. But yeah, I'm so sorry. I know I'd said to you guys last week, hadn't I? Oh, it'll be next week on Sunday for definite. And it was absolutely going to be. But work has just absolutely rinsed my skull the last fortnight. So um, it's as much as I can do to actually find the energy to sit and do this in the evening at the moment. So I will definitely get my backside into gear for next week. And normal service will then be resumed. Oh, Julie, you've been having a bad time at work as well. I think it's just been one of them fortnights. It's just been one of those things. But that's fine. This is a nice way to end my week chilling out with you guys doing this. So same again, I'm just going to feather off on the pressure. So remember on that pressure table in the booklet, I'm going down to like a 2-1 at the moment, whereas I'm probably pushing like a 6-7 up here. 
So just make sure this is nicely saturated at the top. There we go. And then, although you can't see it, this is one of the few where you can't really see the writing too well just because of how pale it is. So this is the Lime Coral. So again, I'm just going to gently integrate that here where I started to sort of ease off on the pressure. So I'm just pushing a little harder because we're going wax on wax rather than wax on oil. Giving you ideas for your flower page. Oh, I'm so glad, Melissa. And we'll need more pictures, by the way. Definitely need more pictures. But no, this is what I, just what I needed tonight. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. So I'm just going to push a little bit harder down here. And in fact, I think I might run a bit of yellow um, through. So again, back to the colour theory. So blue and yellow will make green. So you're very, very safe to assume that you can blend a yellow into a green pencil and it's not going to make a really ugly, horrible colour. So I'm just going to leave a little pop of white paper down the base here. And let's have a look. We haven't used this jasmine colour yet, although that might no, it won't pop as much. We'll go for the jasmine. Jasmine. Is that jasmine? Yeah. So again, this is one of the few where you can't actually make the writing out just because it's so pale. So this is not quite yellow, not quite green, so it will sit really nicely at the bottom of the shape here. And then I'm just going to press harder and just back blend that slightly. So just smish everything together. And then I'm just going to take back the phthalo green light, which is in the soft touch range. And just darken up this end here. And then while I'm at it, I'll just very gently blend this down where I've run those lighter colours and it just makes everything pop all that more than it was a minute ago. So you can see how soft they are because you do get these little bits everywhere. So that is looking quite good. So what I'll do with these um, colour combinations is this is going to be a symmetrical. So let me just unzoom. This one's going to be symmetrical. So everything that I've done on this side, I will obviously do on this side. And there will be lots of sparkly gel pen type things going on in and around this guy here. So hopefully that's been a really good indication of how nicely these pencils will all go together. So we have used the classic soft touches with the pastel tint. We've used the gold ones with the pastel tint and they just sit really, really, really nicely together. So I'm just gonna put these all side by side because I'm definitely gonna have to uh, re-watch my own video to remember what I've done where, I think, you guys. This is gonna be one of those lives where we're not remotely prepared at all. <laughs> So just remember guys, um, the set that I've shown you tonight has been the pencil case set. So if you are in the market for these pencils, um, you've seen something that you like the look of. At the moment, they are on sale. They've got 32% off them online at the moment, which brings them down to just over 40 quid. With my discount code, you'll get another 30% off. And just a little tip, if you've used the code once already, and you have a backup email or your other half has a backup email, you can actually use it again with a different email address. So just a little bit of information there. So thanks for joining me tonight. All of the products that I've used with you guys this evening will be in the description below for those of you that are watching on YouTube, as well as the discount code, which I'll share with you in my stories on Instagram and also in the description on YouTube. And then I will hopefully see you guys again next week on Sunday when we will start working with the ink tents. So does anybody want a cheeky peek at the multimedia set before I disappear? I'm wondering if you do. Anybody want a little look? I'm just going to have a quick sip of my juice. Yeah, I'm feeling all good at this end, you guys. Dominique says yes. Right, I'll show you. 
Okay, what is the code, says um, Katrina? It is Suzanne30, Suzanne30. Yes, we do. Yes, please, says Helen. <laughs> you guys are funny. As if you were going to say no, hey? Right, let me just get the, the booklets and things that come with. Okie dokie dokie. Oh, go on then, says Julie. Okay, so multimedia set that came yesterday. So you get lots and lots of stuff in this one. So you get the little booklet again. Um, this one is very slightly different. It goes through lots of the different components that you get in this set. So you get 30 of the soft touch classic pencils, 30 watercolor pencils, 30 metallic pencils, graphite pencils, water soluble ones, um, pastel pencils, charcoal pencils, and various graphite sticks and things that made me look like I'd been doing a very, very mucky job last night when I was playing around with them. I was covered in the stuff, <laughs> just everywhere. So loads of different information in this book about how to use some of the products that are in this set. The good thing about this set is with it being a mixed media one, if you don't necessarily have the budget to spend out on all these different sets, you know, of pencils individually, you actually get a sample of three different kinds of pencils all in the one set for the one price, if that makes sense. So with this one, you do get a tutorial of a, a watercolour dragon that you can you can do so I won't unfold this because it's absolutely massive but you also get a whole bunch of these pads as well so you get pastel paper for the pastel pencils more black paper you actually get some graph paper sketch pads which is really really good for those of you that like to do bits of drawing and stuff the little squares on here are really really helpful you get a watercolour pad and you also get a cartridge paper pad which is just down on the floor so you get a shed load of stuff with this one so in the set itself it's a nice zip up case with a handle again this weighs an absolute ton we have 30 watercolour pencils and a water brush to use them with they're not in any kind of order whatsoever um, at all let me see what you guys are saying have to let you know how I like the metallic pencils. I might be talked into showing you one of them while I've got you here. We'll see how we go. So these are all the watercolour pencils, the same colours as you would get in the 48 or 120 set. Then you get 30 of the classic colours as well. So these are exactly the same as you would get in the 48 and 100, no, 72, I want to say, and 120 sets regularly. So you get a nice selection of these. Again, in absolutely no sense of a sensible order, which is completely pickling my brain. I might have to do something with this. And then you get 30 of the metallics as well. So remember that the metallic set is normally, I think, 48 pencils. So you are a few short here, but you do get a really good sample of them. Now, these ones, you'll remember me saying the other week, are ones that I did not have. So I'm actually quite chuffed with... Uh, having these because there's some quite really quite nice shades in here and then we go into some of the technical drawing malarkey so you have a set of pencils ranging from uh, the hard pencils through to soft so you get um, HB 2H which is um, hard and then the softer ones for sketching 2, 3, 4, 6 and 8B you get pastel pencils so have like a red brown white a gray a black and a sepia this white charcoal pencil i think is going to be absolutely wonderful for putting light highlights on things so i'm looking forward to having a play with this the lack of order <laughs> yeah the lack of order is just like oh yes yeah, um it's testing me you get some charcoal pencils as well so i haven't used those since i did my art gcse they were what i got covered in last night <laughs> You get a pencil extender as well, a couple of blending stumps. This is a pastel blending type type gizmo here, which again I was messing about with last night. It's like a rubber tipped thing, so I need to get my head around what, what and how you do with that. And then you also go through um, 
proper graphite sticks, which I'm not going to touch because it, I get covered in it. Um, this is charcoal sticks and you get some like hard pastel colours as well for doing effects. Regular eraser, putty eraser, double hole sharpener, single hole sharpener. No idea why you'd need a sponge, but you know, hey ho. Um, you get a sanding block and you also get these willow charcoal sticks. So you really have, depending on what you're doing, if you're somebody that likes to art journal like I do, you've got all of your pencils there for doing your technical drawing. Um, if you like using pastels, you've got tools, blending tools and things here. And if you like doing proper, proper sketching, you've got all of these graphite. Um, you see, I'm actually going to get covered, but I need to move it. Oh, Yeah, you've got your graphite sticks and your other pastel sticks and things. So... It is a pretty comprehensive kit for the money. You've got to think, you've got almost all of the metallics here in this kit. So they retail at, I don't know, somewhere around the £50 mark. You've got almost the small set of the classics here as well. You've also got almost the full set of the watercolours as well, the small sets, because they come in like 48 colours. So for the money... If there's several ranges of things that you're wanting to try, this multimedia wallet will actually give you three different ranges of pencils to try, plus a whole shed load of stuff in case you fancy being super, super creative with it. So I probably will do another proper... Oh, look at me, I'm covered in graphite. <laughs> I probably will do like a proper whip through of this, um, swatching and other bits and pieces, you know, maybe next week or something, but... This is just to give you um, a little bit of a look at some of the bits that are in here. And I really do need to think of somewhere better for these little monsters because they do um, cover you with stuff. So this is literally graphite that you would have inside pencils. So you can actually um, do your sketching with these. I haven't used these for years. Love them. But you do get a little bit mucky when you're using them. Blue in the 120 set is a mystery. Oh, don't talk to me about that blue, Julie. It, oh, the absolute trauma of that blue. And I've left it alone and it's always driving me nuts. Right, show is a metallic. Okay, hang on. So, mm, 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 let me find a colour I have not used. What I'll do is I'll use, a, use one with the golds. Oh, no, that's, that's me just drop my sheet. One sec, guys. Just chucking my stuff all over the floor. Right, I'm thinking let's, um, or shall we do blue? No, we've got enough blue, let's do purple. So, hang on guys. Thinking the magnetic mauve. So I'm just looking down, this is a pinky purple. So I'm just wondering. Hmm. Purple Lake Deep, I think I've used you already, haven't I? Yeah, so we'll go with you again. Your metallics didn't smell great when you first opened them. Oh, let's give them a go then. Mm. All I smell on these is pencil case. I've given them a really good huff and all I can smell is pencil case. So I don't know, I'm going to have to sniff the whole thing now. Oof. Yeah, they don't... Mm. They don't smell funky, really. They smell all right. Um, yeah, nothing terribly offensive there, guys. Oh, do not roll down this desk because I haven't written you down. Stay. In fact, let me put my sharpener there so you cannot move any further. Right, guys. So I'm going to go for this purple lake deep colour again out of the golds, which I've already used. Now I'm just going to show you real quick one of the metallics, which is this magnetic mauve. And this is one of the ones that's all twinkly. It's beautiful. So I'm going to come down to the bottom end here of these shapes. Let's go in for this bit here. And this will be the last little bit that I'm doing with you guys. Do I want sell sleeves for their ink tense blocks? Maybe those could work. I will actually look into those because it, it doesn't end well. Every time I touch that case, I get covered in graphite. <laughs> so I might have to have a little look for that. Actually, I'm going to put it in this shape here. So on with the purple lake deep first. 
And this is the last little tiny bit I'm going to do with you guys and then I am going to disappear so I've got time to get this all uploaded onto YouTube and then watch a little bit of TV with my lovely, lovely wife who's sitting here very quietly with her headphones on watching the telly. Bless her. So what I'm going to do is just ease off again on the blending. That's where we're going to add in the metallic colour. So I played around with these last night and these please me as much as the um, sparkly pens that I use. So you'll hopefully see why in a second. There we go. So then on with the magnetic mauve. So this is the metallic range. So again, we've got that black barreled pencil, nice clear writing on it. And they are classifying their pencils now um, MT for metallic. And I'm still covered in graphite. Yuck to go and uh, give my hands a good wash when I'm finished on here or I'm going to be putting that all over the place. So what I'm going to do with this is these are nice and soft to use. I'm just going to use circular blending to blend these together. And then what you'll see when I tilt it under the light is that this is all shimmery. So this is another really, really pleasing effect of these pencils. So whilst I didn't actually think that I needed these in my life, I think there's going to be a lot of room for them in some of the things that I do. And again, just remember guys, with that code, if you don't have these, they are on offer and you'll get an extra 30% off. So there we go. So I'm just going to go back to that purple lake deep just to make sure that this is nicely saturated at the top here. And then just go back over again a little bit with the metallic. Right. What I'm going to do actually is stick them two in the pot there because I've used that for more than one space now. So hopefully I'll get this for you. So here, look. You see that sheen? With that metallic colour on there. So quite a few of them. In fact, I might be able to... Babe, you do me a favour. Could you pass me the swatch that's just on that unit, please? Yes, yeah, so if you look at this, when I tilt it, look at how shimmery shiny that is. So I, I was really undecided. I, you know, I didn't have these in the range. Thank you, darling. I wasn't planning on getting them um, at all. Then of course I've got 30 of them in this pack and I was playing around last night on a bit of paper and I was like, oh, my magpie gene has just been triggered because look at that. Isn't that cracking? So that would look really, really nice on flowers or or anything really. Yeah, there you go, Liz says, ooh, isn't it beautiful? So if I show you the colours, these are the 30 colours that come in this mixed media set. They don't all shimmer the same but most of them do. So if I just try and tilt these nicely under the light for you, see those two at the top there, absolutely delicious. And these goldy colours as well, um, that camel colour, beautiful sheen. And this Vesuvius grey, I think for areas of light blending over different colours, really quite pleasant. So I'm quite, look at that one, that's lush. So I'm quite taken with these and I will be encompassing them in my colouring, I think, quite regularly. So yeah, for somebody who was convinced I didn't need these, I'm pretty glad that they were in that mixed media set. So yeah, you can just see, and they're all quite sheeny, but that metallic one, just look at the pop. It's good, isn't it? So yeah, anyway. That's me for the evening. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we've obviously had a little bit of a look at this mixed media set. I think I will go through the set in a little bit more detail with you guys on a live next week. I just thought you might appreciate a sneaky, sneaky peek. So for those of you catching up on YouTube, all the items I've used, the links will be in the description below along with details of my discount off code with Castle Arts. 30% off with code Suzanne30. And it's valid on their website for customers in the UK, the US and Germany. 
for everybody else, thank you very, very, very much for your company tonight. I will see you again next week and I will make sure that I get my uh, act together and get this Ink Tense page planned out this weekend so that I'm ready for you guys. But I will be in Facebook and on Instagram over the weekend anyway, as usual. So thanks for your company. And uh, yeah, take care, guys. Let me just see everyone's saying bye. Let me just scroll back. Take care, Liz and Angela, Jeanette, Night Night, Julie, Helen, and Mel over in Australia. Oh, they're called Ink Tense Grippers and should fit. I'll have a look at those. Thank you very much for the tip. Take care, Liz. Take care, Helen. I'm going to love you and leave you all now. So thanks for your company. Have a great weekend. I'm just going to whip you out of my phone stand. And it's bye from me. Take care, folks.